So we just built a REST API inside the .NET Core framework. So that must really require a lot of different files, a lot of complexity, and the answer is actually no, it really doesn't. I can show you this in a single video, the files that we have created. So here we have the REST API again, this is the full project we have. Now there's some information at the top here, like some dependencies I don't want to run over. There is uh, some properties we don't want to run over, because here's a lot of the behind the scenes code that you don't have to worry about, but Microsoft created for us to make this easy for us to make a REST API. Now if I scroll down here we have four main areas that are interesting. The app settings, I'll start with that because it's actually not something I'm going to spend a lot of time in. We have some uh, locking settings and we have some other settings that we can create here. So we're just going to keep the defaults right now and then later we can go and play around with these settings. So let's just ignore the app settings JSON file for now. The one that we really want to discuss right now is the program file and the startup file. Now the program file, that must be complex. No, it's actually not. It's just a simple console application. At least that's how it looks. And inside the console application, all we do is we just run a function right here or method right here called build web host. And that builds a web host. You probably guessed it. But now I said it as well. Now the web host is built right here and that's a lot more complex if we have to dive into the code behind this guy and we're not going to. But I just want to try and explain to you that all we're going to do is we're going to make an iWeb host. So that's just a web host of some kind. And we're going to use a startup class to actually build that. Now what is the startup class? Well that's the final file we have over here which is right here. And the startup file is a way for you to configure your web host. So if you want to do things like dependency injection, if you want to do things like working with a specific database context on startup. So this is a way for you to configure your web host before you actually share it with the world, right? So here we can start adding some configuration files um, like for instance dependency injection is, is set up so we could start using that if we wanted to. We're not going to do right now. But that's what this guy is all about. That's for configuration of your web host. The last file that we have to look at over here is under controllers and this is actually the heart of it all in our case because this is actually the file that we just called before when I showed you that you actually had access to a REST API. So next lesson we're going to dive into this file and I'm going to start to explain to you how we actually get information from this file using um, the HTTP request response and the entire HTTP protocol. See you next time where we'll start diving into this guy. But I want you guys to know that's all it took. That's all the files we have to work with right now. A controller, a startup file, a program file, Gajumi, we're ready to work. See you next time.